Yo, yo, yo. You hit Far Rockaway, New York. Crate and Y. It's your boy Relvin Blacken. And you tune into another motherfucking episode of The Culture Plug. Welcome to The Culture Plug. Another episode. Back at it again. Um, first and foremost, I would like to thank all my viewers, all my listeners. If I have not said it already, I appreciate every single last one of you. Um, I have a special guest today by the name of Tyrell. He is one of the owners of The Crate. He, um, the Crate is a clothing store in Queens. He's on his entrepreneurship. He curved the corporate world and said, I'm gonna do my own thing. Did I get that right? Yeah, that's, that's correct. Um, how did the Crate come about? Um, so I got a partner that I also own the store. His name is Terrell also, just oddly. Okay. Um, shout out to my homie, Rack. Um, and before selling clothes, of course, I used to sell cars. So I was always like a talkative person. Oh, okay. I used to be a car seller. Mm -hmm. So like I always have a niche to be, I guess, cool with people in a sense and attract people. Um, so after I stopped selling cars for a while, of course I was doing some shit I probably shouldn't have been doing. Um, came up with some money and my, my man was like, yo, yo, I got an idea for a clothing store. Let me throw a here. I'm like, um, I got, he was like, yo, I got an idea for a clothing store. I'm like, clothing store? I'm like, where? And he's basically trying to tell me like, yo, I want to do it in Far Rockaway. So I'm like, where? I'm like, I'm not really in on that. You know what I'm saying? Because this is like a, you know, just a rough neighborhood. I know, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, You're from Far Rockaway. I'm from Far Rockaway. Okay. I lived out here 18 years. He lived out here 30 years. So he was just like, yo, clothing store. I'm like, clothing store? I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Came over here one day, watched the block, watched people going into like stores that was kind of shitty. But people are going into the stores. I'm like, Clothing nah. stores, different? Yes, they, they were on the block mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, damn, if they're going to these stores where they, I know they're selling fake shit, if I put some real shit on the block, they gonna go stupid, it's gonna go crazy. And that's, here we are. Um, so this is um three years, so soon to be three years. Soon to be three years, September make three years. Mm -hmm. so, and how did you go about promoting it? Um, funny, me and my friends, I tell you, we was outside, reckless, wow. Um, we came up with the name of the store, maybe like July. Mm -hmm. We got hats made. And we was like, yo, we're gonna just rock the hats all over. And we just started giving them to all the people that we thought was cool. Mm -hmm. Because you know how this shit goes. No, 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 people, we were just speaking about this. Once somebody wear it, they co-sign it, then... It's over. Yeah, uh-huh. So uh, you started off with the hats. And before the store even opened. Before the store even opened. So now we in the strip clubs. It's 15 of us with the crate hat. We got Drake ask having his friend come ask, like, yo, what what are those hats? Like what ask them what the crate means. Which strip club was this? Uh we was in Starlands that night. And matter of fact, Chinks was there, uh, French Montana's brother. Mm -hmm. Um in I think it was the Ovi O'Brien kid. Kid, blonde hair, mm -hmm. and I see him and Drake talking, and they came over like, yo, no, nah, niggas just wanted to know like, what the crate meant. I'm like, oh, that's why, that was kind of crazy. Like, that was, that was. So did you give Drake a No, we did not that head? night. You know what was crazy? We didn't because we were in there sweating. And you're not gonna get, he don't want no sweaty hat. He wants a brand new hat. I wanna went over there and told him, give me your address. I'll send some hats to you and do me a favor. I I, do me a favor and wear this hat on your Instagram or in the next video. Uh, I'm, I'm that guy. I'm but you security, security, security you guard, saying? too drunk, and the security guard wasn't letting you get that close. close. Yeah, it wasn't happening. What like about that. the first So, day? yeah, I got his number and he never answered the phone. Oh man. my god. OBO okay. O'Brien, if you ever see this nigga, what's up, bro? Time to reach out to y'all niggas. <laughs> it ended up being in, um, like, this is an exclusive. I never, I like, I really never told this story. And, they end up being in uh, what's that shit called? David Buses in the city. That's next it, night. It's next night, mm -hmm. and I'm like, shit. I'm saying like, uh, you know, shit like that happens. But we'll yeah, meet again. We'll meet again. The hats though. The hats made this shit just it brought a light to it before okay. the store opened. So yeah, three years hats. That's what made the crate a little bit popular in okay. the, the jump. Um, what does the crate mean? Okay, so when you think about the crate, you think about the struggle, you think about the block, you think about the hustle. So it's like the crate is relatable to everybody because everybody deals with a crate part of life on an everyday basis. 
Crate is like you sitting on the block hustling, trying to get the money. So we look at it the same way. That's why we got t-shirts that say Hustlers Platform. You know what I'm saying? When you think about the crate, it can relate to anybody. It can relate to DJs for milk crates. Stuffing the records in. It can relate to people back in the days when they used to get the milk crate delivered with milk. You know what I'm saying? But for us, we from the hood. It represents the hustle. It represents, you know what I'm saying? Like that block, that struggle. I completely That's what you understand you. Especially being from Far Rock. I always say Far Rock is the area in Queens. It's like, you guys never say I'm from Queens. You gotta make sure. You gotta say you from, from Far, Far Rock. Like, you, you're not. Yeah, like, you don't say Queens. Why not? Like, what? I think. I wanna know, like, why do y'all do that? Like, what's. I think this is, like, out the way. It's like, this is like a dead end. So the fact that it's like a dead end, it's like, it's all, it's by, it's by itself. It's like. We're like forgotten in a sense like we know if we didn't have a store if we if we put the store somewhere else it would probably be bigger than this right Definitely. but but it makes people remember this it makes people remember far rock because of the crate so going back forward when you were saying the whole situation with um your cars you were selling cars so you were never into fashion prior i was always into fashion since a kid like tell me like what sparked like i love fashion fashion is my thing Ugh, shit. yo i I couldn't even tell you when. I remember though, I'll give you a story. I remember my mom when I was like six buying me a fake Tommy Hilfiger shirt. This fake Tommy Hilfiger shirt? They were they were called Tommy jeans, but it was a fake one. I listen. <laughs> I must have been like six or seven. And six six or seven years old and I knew it was fake. How did you know it was fake and you were six or seven? I don't know. I just knew right there and then I knew about clothes. Like that was weird. But I knew it was fake. She did you tell her? Did you tell her? No, she probably gonna see this and know that I knew it was fake though. And they had me tight, and I never wore it. And from that day on, I was like, yo, I gotta get my. That day, I must have been like eight. Six years old, eight years old. Maybe, yeah, around around that time. And I told myself right then and then, yo, I gotta get my own money to get my own clothes. <laughs> right then and then, that's crazy. I haven't thought about that in a long time, but that's what sparked. Like, yo, I want to do little, I wanted to do little chores after that to get my own sneaker money, my own clothes. And once high school came, it was like, it was over. Like, I was, I was, besides one of my friends, I was easily, easily one of the most stylish people in my school. Easily. Definitely. Where, where did you go? To? I went to school at Campus Magnet in Queens, outside of Queens. Oh, Andrew Jackson. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, It almost went left for me. If I didn't go to public high school, I think like I wouldn't even care about clothes or anything like that. It's because okay. like I was going to private school prior to that and everybody's rocking uniform. It's not, yeah. fashion isn't like, it's not something major. It's not important. It's when you go to public school, I think, is that you're seeing different stuff. You're yeah. seeing like, I gotta get this, I gotta get that, or you're trying to be in a loop or whatever. They like I remember being one of the first kids coming to school with like Mesquite shirts. Like, you remember, the, I don't know if yeah, you remember, yeah, remember when Machine got hot, like, 01, 02, I remember, like, being one of the kids, like, what is that? Like, that's who I wanted to be. I always wanted to stand out. Lacoste shirts, they'd be like, yo, why are you wearing peach shirts? And that was me. Like, that was me. I didn't care about what nobody thought. And fast forward, started wearing clocks and shit. Like, that was my, niggas You started wearing thing. clocks? Clocks. Oh, like, okay. I had the bait clock. They had made a clock and it was like small. They started out on with all North Faces, all fucking Air Jordan sweaters, like 2001, three. Like, I I don't talk about it a lot, but I used to really be doing like sneak, sneaker shit. I used to have sneakers crumble on me. Like, they get, I guess I bought them, let's say like it's 2003. I bought a, two, a 1994 pair of twos. Mm -hmm. They probably sat in the heat somewhere, so they got the sole got tightened. Yeah, so they crumbled now when I wear them. Mm -hmm. But I didn't give a fuck. I wanted people to see, like, yeah, oh shit, why is nigga crumbling? Oh no, that must be the old ones. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was stupid was like that. That was like, yo, like, that was me. Like, I didn't give a fuck. Like, oh, alright, don't worry, I got a fresh pair of sneakers somewhere close. I just wanted to show you these crumble because. I just want to let you know I've been happy. Yeah, like, oh, oh alright. Like, you know what I'm saying? That was just the way of me. But, you know, from that, I knew I was in the fashion, Seinfeld jackets, all types of stupid shit. I was like, I used to be out, like, out there. 
I started selling cars and that shit kind of not sidetracked me, but you get more focused into doing shit for money and not for the passion. So, you know, you being 19, uh, car salesman manager telling you, yo, you can make 100K a year. I'm like, 100K a year? But I gotta wear suits five, six days out the week? And I gotta work for you? Nah, you, you, you're 19. I'm cool with working for you. I can make $100,000 at 19. Definitely. Think about being 19, make $100,000. That is nine thousand dollars a month. Is not even making that. Exactly. So I'm like, yeah, I'm taking this. Then after a while, you start realizing, like, yo, I'm doing this shit for money and not for love. You understand? Mm -hmm. This is not what I would love to do for the rest of my life. I would not love to sell a car. I don't give a fuck if you gave me the manager salary that made three hundred thousand dollars a year. That's not what I want to do. That's not what I was put on this earth to do. Sell your car. Uh, Honda, Toyota, uh, BMW, I'm not interested. <laughs> okay. No, 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 I, I completely, what you're saying right now is, is is essential due to the fact that I feel like um, our parents work so hard. Like, in this world, it's, it's, it's America. Like, I, I, my parents are Caribbean or whatever the case may be. So it's like, they work this hard for you to do what you want to do. It's not like, I'm not, I want to do what makes me happy at the end of the day. It's not what I think is going to make ends meet or selling cars, like you said, or even with me, sometimes I go back and forth with like the medical field and then doing this um, interview and stuff. But I know deep down in my heart, like this is what I was put on this earth to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I tell people all the time when they go with your heart, right? Go with what you want to do. It's gonna work out. It always works and out. Even, Hard work beats talent every trip. And even if it doesn't work out, you'll be happy doing that. You you end up yeah. You end up happy, and I think about all the successful people that I look up to. They did what they wanted to do. They did exactly what they wanted. They followed that dream as far as they wanted to follow it. Mm -hmm. And look where they are. Definitely, definitely. You know, so. Um, how do you go about picking the collection? Um, well, I'm not gonna front. As of lately, we've kind of been like, I want to say a little bit, not, I wouldn't say organized, but we've been a little all over the place. So now we're like really getting our structure right. Um, and I tell you, I just go back to 2004, 2005, Terrell, because that's the guy who was like most creative. And when I can be that guy, smoke a little weed or whatever the case is, and turn into that guy for a second, shit, you gonna get some incredible shit. No, I agree with you, I agree with you. Do you think it's hard, like having a collection and to make sure it's in the same frequency as the culture? 100%, because you can end up dropping some, something and they're like, what is this? Now you made too much of it, or you could be too late. The colorways. Yeah, yeah, you got like you got you gotta know you gotta know what's next. It's like a fashion curve. You gotta be, you gotta see it from afar. Whatever. I, I look at like Tumblr. I feel like Tumblr be knowing when the fashion wave is about to come before it comes. Um. Yeah. I think really, if you just pay attention to the '90s. It's just repeating itself. No, definitely. Everything, yeah. everything is uh, not. If you brought back anything from the '90s right now that somebody else didn't bring out yet, you won. Just mm. gave everybody a gem. Mm. If you brought out something from the '90s that nobody else brought out right now, you won. So, there you are. Definitely. Um, I see that in your stories, like less is more. Do you agree? Like with the conversation? Um, like you yes. have a lot of pieces, but yeah. I think that's um I think see the main objective is like when you go into Macy's it feels so like cluttered. But when you go into those little boutiques, it feels like you can shop. I wanna sh I want my I want somebody to, to be able to say, ah, oh, let me oh, okay, yeah, I see this. Not like like you like you a dog digging in the dirt. <laughs> I hate those types of stuff. I don't like shopping at Macy's or even in the thrift store. It's just or, too much. Yeah, so it's just too much. Like you just try to keep a clean aesthetic, and I think that keeps the the customers happy, and that's also happy because this is where I would want to shop if I didn't own the store. 
I, I was listening to one of your podcasts with um Fubu. Okay. With Carl 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 Brown is his name? Yes. Shout out to Carl. I feel like this is like kinda like what you wanna do, like be the next Fubu. Um, if I get if I could take a little bit of FUBU's uh, advice and I could take a little bit of what Supreme does, I would put both of them together and I would create some. Um, what what do Supreme do that's like different? I think they stay exclusive throughout mm-hmm. the matter of the year. Um, I think, what is it, like eight weeks they stopped selling? It's throughout the summer, right? Um, but when it drops and you missed out, it's over. I think. Fubu was fire, but it's like, everybody had it. What makes this shit a little bit hot is like, boom, we dropped the jacket. It was a hundred of them. A hundred is gone. There's it's maybe a hundred other people that want it. It's not here. So they know when that next one comes, they gotta have that one. And the hundred people that have that jacket, need that one too. So now you're creating a customer base. You understand what I'm saying? But. I think they have an aesthetic I like, and I think FUBU have one. Cause FUBU really touched the urban culture. So I still want to touch the urban culture, but I want to touch everybody in a way where it's like exclusive, not too crazy. Like, I want people to be like, damn, I missed out on that one, I need that one, I need the next one. Like when these headbands is gone, there's gonna be people that want these colors and they're not gonna be here anymore. They're gonna be mad. And they're gonna be mad. <laughs> and it, it, it doesn't make me mad. It doesn't make me mad. What it does is it raises the value. Um, how do you feel with what virtual has done so far with like Pyrex and Off White? I, I fuck, I, I fuck with Virgil's whole aesthetic because it's funny. Growing up, I wanted to. Be an architect. I wanted to like make mansions and shit like that. Like I was always like, it might sound stupid, but I was always like into lines. It might sound weird, but no, no, no. that's how we're all. There's gotta be some type of business. So when I seen him come out with a brand with like just lines, I was like, damn, that's kind of like that's cool. And he took like a, the construction work of vibe and kind of put it together. So when you see a guy like that, that you know is from Chicago, urban area. And he made it to a far level. You're like, shit, yeah, it's still room for a guy like me. Because I got a creative mind. They don't know it yet, but I got it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I look at people like Virgil, the Jerry Lorenzo's, that whole crew, and I'm like, damn. Like, yeah, they're doing it? All right, cool. Y'all don't know who I am, so. I understand, I understand. Um, another fashion guy, I just want your opinion. ASAP Rocky. Yeah, fuck him. ASAP right. Ferg. Ferg, he, uh, he had his times. He had his, he had his times. He had his times where he's like, uh, uh I don't know. <laughs> but he, for the most part, I fuck with Ferg. For the most part, he had a pink below outfit on. I think he second guessed it too. I didn't fuck with that. I ain't fuck with him. Rocky's done shit. I ain't fuck with it either. You know what I'm saying, but I fuck with Rocky though. I fuck with Rocky because he knows how to express himself. You, you know what I'm saying? didn't go wrong with Rocky. I didn't like. What I didn't like did. the Supreme shirt with the Gucci shirt and the Fendi jacket. I don't like this. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend I and I fuck with Rocky. Mm-hmm. So you can't like you're not like I liked him having Alexander Wayne Adidas shirt on with Car per, Orange Carhartt V Lone whatever collab and fucking Nike shorts. That's expressing yourself and that shit looked ill. Mm-hmm. But. Louis, Fendi, good. And then because, I understand you can do it because you're Rocky, but I ain't fucking with it. But he's done a lot of shit I fuck with. And I, I fuck with Rocky and I fuck with the whole ASAP mom. Shout out to the nigga, shout out to Todd too. I wasn't feeling with the ASAP for, with the whole flair. Yeah, yeah, that's not him. That's not I, him. I don't like that. Uh, yeah. It's probably the people that surround him. It's probably the people that surround him. You should do this or just. Yeah, like switch it up a little bit, but. He don't gotta do that, son. He he already got it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Certain shit you ain't gotta do first. That's just my that's just my opinion. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But when you know you get the the weirdo weirdos around, it, it can get it can get crazy. And it got crazy. <laughs> um, Rihanna. Fuck with Rihanna. She's very probably the most the mo the most stylish female in the game to me. By far, like hands down, this like the face. knows how to express herself to. Another degree. Like, it's no comparison. Mm-hmm. No comparison. So and while, while we're making this conversation, you just gotta throw my man Pharrell in that conversation. 
Oh, yeah. Kanye. Kanye is definitely in this conversation, but for real. Like, for real, I almost, I yeah. almost forgot about that one. Definitely one of the most stylish, too. Probably. So what's the main goal for the crib? Like, I see you have your store out in Far Rock. Like, what is the main goal? What's the ultimate? I know you said something about Supreme. Would you like to open up more stores? Um, yeah, we're, we're thinking about it. We're uh, looking at places, thinking about ideas. Um, like I said, ideally, um, I want to create that same kind of vibe if I could, in a sense. Um, we're just creating right now. Um, and we're just working on every aspect to push the brand more. So once I feel like it's at that level where I can open another store, you guys will see another store. It'll be in a good location. And we'll be able to uh, build some more traction for the brand. Mm -hmm. What are some tips that you could give someone with their like up and coming on entrepreneurship or open up their own clothing store? Don't open the clothes, so now I'm playing with you. Um, <laughs> um, this shit is hard though. Like people come to me all the time, they ask about possibly opening a clothing store and I tell them, I'm like, yo, <laughs> you got your work cut out for you. This is not a walk in the park. Like this is not easy. This is not easy conveying to people that you can create what those brands are creating. Like, we're creating the same shit that they're creating. They like our shit just as much as they would like Diamond Supply if it was in her 100. They like that just as much. So, I mean, I just figured just stay consistent, whatever you're doing. Like, just keep pushing at it. Because you can't lose at anything that you continue to work at. And I always say that hard work always beats talent. It goes right back around to passion. You gotta have a passion for it. Yeah. You gotta want to do what you're doing. And I always say that, like I spend years doing shit for money and not for the love. So now I find myself not making as much money as I used to make and not doing the things that I love to do. But I know that there's an end result down the end of this road. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna hold off and just focus as much as my time and my patience is a can on this, and this shit is gonna pay off for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Um, since we're in Far Rock, yeah. um, I want to know, like, I'm not from this side of Queens or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. but what did like stack bundles and chinks like oh, do for Far Rock inspiration? Well, first of all, RP the stack, RP the chinks, Riot Squad. Um, shit, they're, they're like an inspiration to the hood because it's like. They were the guys that actually make it out, get away from here for a time. A stack didn't, like he was like back and forth, but when you think about guys like that, you're like, damn, they were actually about to create a pinnacle in Far Rockaway that was like almost untouchable, which is still untouchable because nobody else has done it yet. But they're like, you know, saviors of the hood. I mean, even changed when we first opened the store. Um, the shit before we opened the store. He came here and did a back to school um, giveaway with us. And you know, Keen was here too, and the kid was excited. And that right there, if nobody ever respect Chinks out here, I don't know how people felt about him. I know they had to give him some type of respect after that. Cause he didn't have to come here and do that. He didn't. You know what I'm saying? We didn't pay him to do that or nothing. He was like, yo, we just want to give back some book bags to the kids. And we want you to come do it with us. He was like, all right, I'm with it. That. And I think that was pretty dope, and I forever got a love and a respect for Chinks for that. But you know, Stack was the one who put Chinks on, and he laid a platform for him. Mm -hmm. So how could we not, you know, show respect to Stack too? And everything he did for Queens. I remember being in school, and kids dancing my camera and I shoot the podcast with. He used to, oh, Stack, this guy from your other Stack. I'm like, nah, he had me stumped for a minute. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Because I lived in Far Rockaway, but I never really talked to nobody. Like, I used to just be on my own. So, mm -hmm. even when he's like, rap, rap, I'm like, who? I had to really, like, all right, cool. I see you, son, you know what I'm saying? Beam a two tone. All right, this is the rapper, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I used to remember seeing Stack walking in the party eating ice cream cones 7, 8 in the morning. Like, he was a regular door, and he showed a lot of love to the other. To the point that he didn't even want to leave. Yeah. Man. Shout out to Stack, man. Damn. Right. Um, last question. 
Who was the first celebrity that you seen wearing the crate that you got absolutely hype about? Um. It don't have to be the first. Yeah, the first or the last. Ashanti. Ashanti. She took the hat from her sister, mm -hmm. the homie slow uh, girl, uh, Shia, and. She, I, th I think she took the half of my and Ja Rule, the one that was posting the video. No, 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 Ashanti was actually making the video. Ja Rule and it was in it. And she had the blue hat on. I'm like, oh shit. Niggas, yo, Ashanti got a hat. Oh, it's crazy. That was crazy. That was crazy. The store wasn't even open. We didn't, oh. even, have a t we didn't even have a t shirt there. The wall, I don't even think rack racks was enough. Nothing. Ashanti had that. So it was like two years ago then? Yeah, that was the summer of 2014. She had the hat on. That was crazy. I'm telling you, that was crazy. Like people, like it must have been like a week after we made the hat. You know, Shanti had the hat on. Like, what? We was stuck, you know? Yeah, that was crazy. That was <laughs> dope, 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 dope. I would like to thank you. Um, I appreciate you for doing an interview with us. Yeah. Is there anything that you would like to say? Um, nah, not really. Uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, check me out on IG, Ben Blackett. You know, we got a podcast. We doing shit, too. It's a dope podcast. It's a great podcast. Make sure you check that shit out. And you know, we here at the store, man. We turning up for Queens. We turning up for New York. We turning up for United States. I'm out this bitch. <laughs>